It is 7 o'clock, and thank you all for coming to the town of Batesburg, Leesville. So our regular council meeting is January the 11th, 2021. Welcome to a new year. And at this time, I call the meeting to order, and I would like to invite Pastor Kent Suits up for our invocation. I'd like to read a couple of verses from Second Chronicles chapter 7. It says this, If my people who are called by name, my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Let's pray. Father God, we... Thank you for your ears that you listen attentively to our prayers when we come in faith, acknowledging who you are, and when we come in your name. Lord, our land needs healing. Our land needs uh, nationwide repentance. Our land needs you. And so help us, help us all to humble ourselves, to pray, to turn from our wicked ways, Lord, I know this country is worse off because of my sins. I know this state, my family, my church are all worse off because of me. And so help me to humble myself, acknowledge my sins, and then help all of us to do the same thing. And we pray that as we do that, as we humble ourselves, that you will fulfill your promise in your word to heal our land. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Ken. At this time, stand for the pledge. Be led by Mr. Owen Gambrell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Prost, a second? Second. Ms. Etheridge? Um, any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3, yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. The agenda has been approved for this evening. Um, item 5, adoption of the minutes from the regular council meeting on December 14th. Do I have a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Mr. Gambro with a motion to adopt. Second. Second. Second, Mr. Etheridge. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. I vote yes. Adoption of the minutes of the regular council meeting December 14th have passed. Um, item 6, Mayor's Report tonight. Our next regular council meeting will be on February the 8th, uh, 2021. Uh, item B is our council committee's report. Uh, Central Midlands COG Council Member Hall. Central Midlands COG has not had a meeting since our last uh, council meeting. There is a meeting scheduled next week. Thank you, sir. Um, EPAC, Council Member Prouse. Uh, EPAC's next scheduled meeting is next Wednesday the 20th. Uh, nothing to report since our last council meeting. Thank you, sir. And the comment, uh, Advisory Committee, Council Member Kane. The comment meets, and um, there's a couple of things. One, I'm sad to report that we had a fatality on the bus. Last week, a uh, lady went into uh, cardiac arrest on the uh, on the trip on the bus and uh, passed away. Um, we had um, some vandalism to the to a couple of the shelters um, this month. And well, let's like I said, we we meet regularly. I probably should just when I get these things, send y'all these things. But um, Ted, you're not you're not micromanaging. Okay, so everything, and I say that because everything that, and one thing I like about the comment, even though I spend probably about five, six hours a week doing just comment stuff, just catching up with the with the emails and whatnot, um, one thing I do like about it is that John, the director, 
he really doesn't make a, a decision without consulting the, uh, the board and uh, in great detail. We also have uh, we have working committees that work and report to the board. Our average meeting is about three hours, um, and we meet multiple times uh, a month. So I just want to let y'all know that we we it, it is a um, uh, a well functioning or hard working uh, committee. Uh, with that said. I don't know if Ted, if you, I think everybody received the proposal from the comment to uh, have us pay our portion for service here. I think it was two buses uh, twice a day. It's twice a day? Uh, a couple of them. It was four times a day. It was twice a day, or it was two buses five days a week. I think two it was buses three, five days a week? Three or four loops. Okay, three or four loops uh, around the town and then out to Lexington and the back. So we really need to um, uh, give that to some consideration. And I know some council members had some questions about that. I didn't get those questions back. But at some point, very shortly, I think that we should go ahead and either have a work session on it or vote so that we're either going to be a full participant or we're not going to be a participant. But it, it is a lot of work that, uh, that, that happens there. Okay. So. That's my report, and I'll, I'll try to, to give you guys a, a, a written report like Bob does from uh, Central Mountains, okay? Thank you, Councilman Kane and yeah. the Parish with that family. Uh, Joint Municipal Water and Sewer Commission did not meet in December. I do have a report from uh, the General Manager. Uh, commission continues to make significant progress on the capital improvement plan projects. Most notably, the plant transmission main installation is nearly completed. Um, 25,000 linear feet of 30 inch and 36 inch uh, pipe um, along uh, 378 West of Lexington. The financial outlook remains strong, and we'll be hearing from the auditor uh, this week. And, um, and unofficially, uh, it appears that they've experienced another record financial year in terms of operating revenue due to the combination of solid uh, rate restructure. Um, uh, growth as well as steady residential usage during the initial quarantine months of COVID-19 pandemic. Um, water growth is at 3.81%, sewer growth at 5.85%. Commission's total assets are now uh, over $185 million. Um, and that's uh, my report from the commission. Uh, item C, BL Chamber of Commerce update. Mike Taylor, President of the Chamber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and Council. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, we don't have a whole lot to report uh, this early in the year, but would like to go over what happened or transpired in December. As you well aware, we had the best Christmas decoration contest. Uh, we had like 23 people, our residences and businesses that were recommended. We had five judges that went out to these sites, uh, five judges and some of them with the spouses. Uh, the judge, these residents, uh, they came back with their top ten uh, recommendations on that, and from that list, the top three were picked uh, or from, uh, as per the judges. And the winners were fir first place was Clavey and Jesse Evans, 333 Broder Road. Second place was uh, Tim Roof at 211 North Peachtree Street, and third place was Kevin Healy and Dana Hurley on 241 Main Street in Leesville. <clears throat> Our year, of course, began right now in, uh, in January for us. We run from January to December 31st. And our membership drive uh, is right now, plus our accommodation tax fund request, uh, sent that in. And of course, we have our normal events and they're in the process of planning right now. We will continue to update our membership and the community businesses on the Small Business Administration and Treasury news releases related to COVID-19. Today I posted on our website uh, the SBA and Treasury's announcement of the Payment Protection Program reopening the week of the 11th. I also posted on our Facebook page and website about the opportunity of those 70 years and older to register for the COVID-19 vaccine, and that begins Wednesday, January 13th. And ironically, I had a call from an older lady, and I say older, 
I forget how old I am, so I don't know whether she was younger than I am or older than I am. But anyway, she wanted to know about the vaccine. And I told her to go to our website, and she said, I, I don't do website, I don't do social media, I don't, you know, I, I have, uh, she didn't say quarantine, she said she's been in the house arrest <laughs> since, uh, you know, uh, at March. So, you know, that is a problem, how do you reach these people and get this information to them? So uh, that's something, you know, that we're all struggling with, and uh, we hope to do something about that. I do know one thing, over my life, I certainly, learned how to adapt. And this past year we certainly had to do that. And it's quite obvious we're going to have to do that this year too. So um, I appreciate your, your hard work and so forth. Uh, uh, and I wish you a happy new year. That's my report. There are no questions. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Thank you for your service to our town. Um, Ms. Judy, do you have any public comments this evening? Yes. None. Then we'll move to unfinished business, which we have none, and new business. This evening we have proclamation celebrating Lexington Medical Center's 50th anniversary. And I do believe we have a member of the board here, uh, Dr. Dunbar. Um, let me read this and then we'll do a little presentation to you. <clears throat> Whereas Lexington Medical Center is celebrating its 50th anniversary this month, January 2021, and whereas from starting as a small community hospital in 1971 to becoming the anchor of a modern medical complex today, the hospital's mission is to provide quality health services that meet the needs of the community. And whereas in 1966, <coughs> voters approved a referendum for the hospital, creating the biggest development project ever in Lexington County, a gracious donation of more than 22 acres of land from the Hulan family, Hulan? Hulan, thank you, provided the site in West Columbia. And whereas on January 6, 1971, Lexington County Hospital as it was first called, a four-story building, a fraction of the size of the hospital today, opened. There were 125 beds and 250 employees. Over the years, Lexington Medical Center has emerged as a leader in healthcare. It grew steadily into a large healthcare organization with a wide variety of services. And whereas throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Lexington Medical Center pioneered community medical centers throughout Lexington County created the Lexington, County, Lexington Medical Center Foundation, began operating a skilled nursing facility and Alzheimer's care center, and established a physician network with a variety of medical specialties. And whereas in 2012, Lexington Medical Center began providing a full range of heart services, including open heart surgery and therapeutic cardio, cardiac catheterizations. Since then, Lexington Medical Center's heart program has established itself as a national leader in cardiac care, earning a three-star rating, the highest rating possible from the Society of Thora Thoracic Surgeons, and becoming one of only 30 hospitals in the United States to receive a heart care center national dis distinction of excellence from the American College of Cardiology. And whereas in 2019, Lexington Medical Center completed the largest hospital expansion in South Carolina history when it opened its new patient care tower. Today, Lexington Medical Center has 557 beds, four community medical centers, 70 physician practices, and more than 7,000 employees. The network also has an occupational health center and the largest skilled nursing facility in the Carolinas. Lexington Medical Center operates one of the busiest emergency departments in South Carolina, treating nearly 90,000 patients each year. The hospital delivers approximately 4,000 babies each year, performs more than 27,000 surgeries, and has more than 1 million physician office visits. And whereas Lexington Medical Center has received local and national awards for its outstanding patient care, and whereas the only locally owned independent hospital in the Midlands, Lexington Medical Center strives to offer the most outstanding care to our families, friends, and neighbors now and in the future. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Town Council of Batesburg Leesville do hereby congratulate Lexington Medical Center on celebrating its 50th anniversary this month and applaud the many milestones and achievements throughout their 50 years in serving our communities. Do I have a, a motion to adopt the proclamation? So moved. Mr. Gambrell, do I have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Wise. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 votes yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. 
District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes, the proclamation has uh, been adopted. Mr. Dunbar, Dr. Dunbar, I'll leave you. We'll do our COVID handoff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. Mm. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Right here. And then I get the BL better together. Whatever. Yeah, you line us up. You line us where we need yeah. to go. <laughs> Short and sweet. Yeah. We're all concerned together, of course, about health care in this community, and um, we are all unified in the same effort. And this year, as in some other years uh, more, we are more concentrated, I would imagine, whether we want to be or not. We certainly are. Uh, I will take this and I'll read this at the next board meeting, and uh, they will appreciate this. Uh, you probably will not feel this when it happens, but it will. And they will appreciate it probably more than you know. I uh, thank you for this opportunity, and I hope you have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Sobar. Uh, moving to our next agenda item. Discussion regarding a request by Councilmember Kane to utilize council training and travel funds toward the purchase of new books for children. I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Kane. So, Council, um, it's we know, we just discussed about the COVID that we're not uh, traveling. And so, in lieu of traveling, I would like to use my travel and training money for books for uh, kids in the community. That's, that's it in a nutshell, basically. Uh, and, yeah, do we need to have a motion? I mean, is that, is that your... Do we need to have a motion? We should have a motion before we start discussion, please. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm moving that we... It's on the agenda for a vote. It's it on the agenda, so you can make a motion on it. Yes, sir. So we can't. So it, uh, discussion is not in order before we have an up or down vote. Uh, discussion would be in order as soon as we have a first and a second, sir. Thank you. Yeah, do we need to discuss it, Bob, before we uh, before I make the motion? I yes, we do. Mm -hmm. okay, all right. Um, well, oh, I'm sorry. We need to have a motion. And then yeah, I think we need to have a motion and a second, and then we can have discussion. Please. Okay, so, so move. Yeah. Um, uh, make your motion, Mr. King. Okay, so I move the, to that um, council allow um, District 3 to use its travel and training for books in, the, in light of the fact that we're not traveling and uh, the most training is online now. Mr. Mayor, it's not District 3, school district. It's council right, district. It's council, council district. Town district. district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Council district 3. I'm sorry. Um, Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Kane and a second. Mr. Gambrell, now, now discussion. Mr. Hall? Yes, yeah, sir. Four. I, how much money are we talking about? <coughs> I don't know, Ted. We're talking about $1,500. Manager, if you e would. Each individual member's allotment is $1,500, and that typically is for the MASE conference. Um, the way Typically in the spring, if there's going to be a July MASE conference, we do have to pay a deposit uh, for the room at that time, which I believe normally comes out to about $500. The rest of the money is generally expended once the new year begins in July, August time frame. Without there being an MASE conference this past summer in July, technically there wasn't those normal expenditures in July, August uh, that would have occurred for the hotel stay. So that typically is going to be right around a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand dollars that would have been expended. And continuance of that, do we have an existing policy, hard copy policy, for the use of these funds and for the procedure of approving use of those funds? So we, we're, not, we're not asking for an exception of a noted policy, no. just no. common practice. Correct. I think we need to address the fact that we need a policy long term. Okay, Ms. Mitchell? We're talking about using the money from each individual. No, we're just, just talking about using one. The, the, motion, motion, was the motion was for District this, this 3. This is District 3. Council District 3. Uh, 
if I may, um, if there's a possibility of the MASE conference this coming July. I'm not going to. Okay. All right. So 1500 1, would be that a lot. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Rouse, Florida. Know the price of books. Fifteen hundred is a nice gesture. This is a nice gesture. But I believe that I, for one, would like to go in mine. Do that. Appreciate it. Three thousand dollars would be a lot more. Uh, do a lot more good than fifteen hundred. Not that George is not important. I'm saying. I hear one voice in the middle of the south. <laughs> and I get another. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I would like to add that to his motion. Um, Chris, help me out on that. We've got a motion and a second, and we're in discussion. I don't think that's a problem, but I think that as far as the motion, there needs to be some direction as to how the money's going to be expanded, who's going to be in charge of it. I mean, I understand where we're going, but I think we've got to put some more meat on the bone before we all take a vote. I but think, wait, wait, I think I sent to the, um, the invoice. Jay, you got it, right? I tried looking for that today. I, it's I not going to be in there today because the books are probably, yeah. books are kind of fluid. I remember you seeing it, but I could not right. find it. But it's, it's a, um, uh, what's the name of the, uh, the company? It's, um, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's, it's a uh, national nonprofit, though. And the money does not change hands as far as I'm concerned. But I'll just uh, go through the website and pick the books. And then I'll sit with Jay and uh, we'll, we'll pick the, make the order in the town hall. So it's not like you write me a check for it. I'll make a suggestion. First book. It's called First Book. First book. Yeah. Uh, could we ask the school district uh, librarians to make available a list of certain books and topics that they would love to have in the school system that they have not been able to get? And this money be used for that purpose? In other words, they'll make the choices. As I'm sure Mr. King knew all about literature and like that, but they know better. Who's major? Is, is that the form of a motion? Or? Well, well, that, that's again, the thing. I mean, this you is. Mr. King saying we'll give the money to a national organization. You're talking about spending it in the tank. I mean, that, that's what y'all are trying to. Well, I mean, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. I mean, uh, Owens, uh, 1500 go to the. We can do both. It's not a big, it's not a uh, problem with me. So the, so we, we're, we're purchase of the books would, yeah, my biggest, my question would be, was who, are, who's receiving the books? Yes. Our school. What? Is our school receiving the books? No, I'm not doing the, the I'm not giving the books to, to the school, but um, the age group, are, I mean, anywhere from kindergarten to 12th grade. What, Who distributes or Miss Well, yeah, we just do Miss Etheridge the has the floor. We're, yeah, we're, we're doing through the community through the churches. So you have uh, like uh, friendship has their uh, and you know what in Olive Branch too they have their uh, annual. You know, we have what you call it? Who's who's running education? Mm -hmm. Olive the youth part. Yeah. See, so between you and. Um, What's your name, man? Who's doing that friendship, um, Councilman? What's your name? Clancy. Clancy usually does um, the Sunday school. So we'll, we'll be able to dis distribute the books through the uh, churches and other nonprofits uh, through the community. And we can also work with uh, Lexington 3 and also. Mr. Shani, may I ask a question? You have the floor? What kind of books are you talking about? And I just said, you know, I had a flat tire, so I had to drive the other car. But um, it's a list of books, it's a whole ton of books um, that's listed through First Book. And uh, like one of the books I, that, and I, I do this on a, on, a, on a normal basis also. So the last order of books I had was 100 books for um, Black Panther. And uh, you'd be surprised the little kids when they get, when they get their books out, they, their eyes light up. So um, they just, I just order them and they come to the house. And then I just distribute it to the, to the kids in, uh, in the community. But this is on a larger scale, so I would work through Prince Hook and Olive Branch and um, the Luther Church um, uh, also has, I think the Luther Church down here has uh, kids. They do 
summer program. Darlene Simpkins has a program. There's a lot of people that's doing good things in the community. And, uh, you know, a couple of a couple hundred books would, would go a long way. Since these kids aren't in school right now and we're not traveling. So, but I don't mind uh, putting together, uh, uh, working with the Lexington School District 3 and the churches and getting them out there. It's not a problem. Do we need clarification on the motion? I think that we, we, we go from yeah. the first book. I think we need to redo the motion. Okay. <laughs> so, if we could withdraw what we've done. If we could withdraw motions. <laughs> um, I hate to say that, Mr. Gaines. All right. Yeah, okay. and, and the point. And We're trying to get this the, right. This is the next point. The point is to get the books to the, to the, um, to the kids mm -hmm. without a whole bunch of, you know, adults kind of interfering with that. But. So I guess my motion would be that um, since we have, and John, would you mind working with us? Uh, if, if me, Johnny May, and, and uh, Cynthia can work together, anybody else that wants to work with, with the group too, if we want to work together and distribute the books, I mean, that's a lot of books. And we'll put together a, a group of uh, uh, churches and organizations Mr. Mayor, that want the books. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Hall, if I may. Uh, I don't want to be a wet blanket here, and I think that's a, a very good um, a thing that uh, Mr. Kane, Council Member Kane, is trying to do. But this is a slippery slope. Does this mean that uh, I'm going to have eight people show up at my door next week asking me to allocate my training money to their particular cause? And so we're going to be approaching this. We need to do this on a very formal basis. We need to have a procedure in place and. Uh, guidelines as to how the money is going to be utilized before we take a vote. So I still have a first and a second. I'm um, going to withdraw those motions. Withdraw, sir. Do we have a withdrawal of the first? Yes. Okay. Do I have a new motion? No. We <laughs> have to go down a, a, a serious rabbit hole from, from, right uh, from, from, I'll, I'll, from the I'll, idea. It, it's a great idea. There's yeah. procedure. Yeah. If, if, if council will put this on the agenda for next month, I'll give them Mr. Kane and we'll write up a motion that will handle all the issues and then y'all can bring it up next month. I, I don't, that's I'm fine. Offering, I'm offering. That, that's, that's fine. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Do we need a motion? To do that? No, we're going to move it to next we, week, next month's agenda. Uh, we can put that. We can put that in on the last uh, second, the last it. item on the agenda. I can do it. I'm, right. Okay. I'm making that. Thank you. Uh, item C: First reading ordinance establishing no through trucks designation for a portion of North Peachtree Street. Um, Mr. Luckadoo, I'm going to ask you uh, to uh, comment on this. <coughs> sure. Um, summarize. Summarize, please. Sure. Um, just a few weeks ago, I did receive a petition um, here at Town Hall. Um, Mr. Bill Keesling brought by a petition that is signed by 17 people that live on North Peachtree Street. Um, between West Church Street, which is Highway 23, and Highway 1, that, that portion of North Peachtree Street. Um, their petition is a request for a no through truck designation through this. Um, as they stated to summarize in their petition that they've had an increased presence of, of tractor trailers and large trucks coming through this road. Um, I, I believe most of that is probably due to uh, the, the problem that we have at Pine and, and Highway 23 and people trying to avoid that particular direction um, with a truck. But they sent this petition in. They, uh, I believe Mr. Keesling did email with SEDOT who stated that they are more than happy to put the signs up, but they want the blessing of the local jurisdiction that being us before they put any signs up to know that we support that and are behind that. And so uh, it was placed on the agenda for tonight for council's consideration. How would you re it? I mean... 
Well, I mean, there's there's numerous, and, and this is just my opinion okay. on, on your on your question. There are new, just the street over. You do have North Ridgeville Street that's not as residential as what North Peachtree Street is. It's just one street over. Um, you know, you still have the Pine Street. Uh, I do believe Oak Street already is a no through truck designation, which it's awfully narrow through there. I don't think many trucks are going to attempt that anyways. Uh, but you still have the North Pine and you do have the North Ridgel Street uh, road that runs parallel as well. So, so we in discussion? Uh, well, I was we kind of letting, we're, we're really not in discussion yet, but. Um, so this is first reading, it's got to go through another reading and public hearing. No, there, so there, there's, there's, there's more to come. In our no, packet, I'm going to go ahead and read no this. There's no public hearing on this. Okay, God, thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this ordinance out real quick. It's not very long. Um, and I will kind of summarize here. The town of batesburg leesville hereby prohibits trucks on North Peachtree Street, batesburg leesville between West Church Street, that's SC23, and West Columbia Avenue, this is US1, which is a portion of S-344. This, this section of roadway is a residential district, and over the past several years, the heavy tractor trailer traffic from transporters has increased, making safe egress from driveways more difficult, causing a hazard for vehicles and pedestrians, and leading to a negative quality of life impact on this residential neighborhood. This ordinance is effective as of final reading. So this is first reading. I'm asking for a motion to adopt first reading. So moved. Mr. Prowse, do I have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Etheridge. Now, um, I'll entertain discussion. Anyone? Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Hall? I may. Enforcement uh, is an issue here. Is there a penalty for violation of this uh, no truth? Chief, would you like to address what y'all done in the past? It would just be a, uh, well, at first it would be a warning, of course, to trucks find out that that is now a no through truck. Then after a period of time of warnings, it could be a, a normal traffic violation. That's and the case. normal traffic violation carries a penalty of? Well, most uh, traffic violations now, because of all the uh, fees and assessments go to the state, are $150 a minimum pretty much now because of all the fees and assessments to the state. <laughs> but your officers are authorized to issue warnings for a period of time. Correct. Until, until the truckers find out that that is, that, that, that the sign will go up, but of course we want to give the truckers a grace period that they understand that the sign is now up, so we will issue warnings for that period of time, for a period of time. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? Yeah, I need to raise a little hell. Mr. King? All right. So, now, we're moving on this one, but now for years we've been trying to get a no through truck for Raleigh Road uh, coming up near Friendship, and we haven't been able to do that. Yeah, coming from, uh, matter of fact, that's where Gibbs, uh, Reverend Gibbs, was, was in a uh, terrible accident um, just a couple of weeks ago. But the neighborhood, the neighbors have been complaining for, for years about the, the big trucks coming through that neighborhood. So I like to add that uh, portion of Broadway Road to this if we're going to um, uh, do a no through uh, truck for uh, Peach Street. It's less traffic on Peach Street than on Broadway Road coming off of, uh, what is that? Uh, Sheely Road. Coming up uh, on Sheely Road, then you, you make that uh, left turn on to Broadway Road, you come out at uh, Friendship. There's a lot of big trucks coming through there. A lot of kids play over there, too. I, I, if I may, Mr. Mayor, um, I've been aware of, of speeding complaints that, that have come out. I've never heard specifically of no through truck on Broadway Road. Um, what I would state is that is not on the agenda tonight. The agenda specifically states North Peachtree. So if, if it's something that the residents down there... We can pass this on first reading, but we can amend it on the second reading, right? No, it would have to be a new, new separate agenda. Right. I would just uh, start over. Well, we can do that, or we can have uh, this council just be aware that, you know, we, we're doing this on one end of town. We need to do it on what we do for one community, we need to do for every community. Um, yeah, you may. I will say this. I was asked 
to help draft this ordinance. I have never, as long as I've been town attorney, ever been asked to draft an ordinance for my race. Never been before me before. Okay. If, if right now, if I'm being told to do it, I'll do it right now and come the first week next month. Mm -hmm. But this is not picking one community over another. This came before. Right. This is about Peachtree Street. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just say this. this you know, uh, Charles Simpkins was a lot of things, but he did bring this to uh, to council and to staff on several occasions. So, but that's fine. We we all moving forward. It's 2021, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to put this um, uh, together for uh, for the families over on. Um, Please. Yes, I'll have that done Okay. Any other discussion on the first reading of the ordinance establishing uh, no food trucks designation for a portion of North Peachtree Street? Any other discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 votes yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. I have a yes. First reading passes. Thank you. Um, Item D, approval of engineering firm to prop, perform the GIS locating services of the town's sewer collection system. Um, manager, if you would. Okay. Um, council in this year's fiscal year 2020-2021 budget did allocate $60,000 um, towards a first phase of GIS, uh, more specifically this year to uh, perform GIS services on the town's sewer collection system. Um, we did post for an RFQ uh, to, that went out on the town website as well as the South Carolina Business Opportunity website. Uh, we did receive those bids in. Uh, I believe it was 10 off the top of my head uh, that we received. Um, we did evaluate among the staff the 10 that came in and our recommendation, based on the responses, is to uh, hire Thomas and Hutton to perform the GIS services on the sewer collection system. And what this will do is it will allow us to move from uh, having to utilize paper maps to locate our, our sewer infrastructure to having something that is GIS-based on a computer that if we need to locate our, our utility infrastructure, uh, points we can go on a computer in the vehicle and, and access that. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve uh, staff's recommendation? Make a motion we move to accept the staff's recommendation on GI and this whole game services. Mr. Gamble, do the second? Second. Second, Mr. Prouse. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Hall? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Okay, this is $60,000 down payment on the system. Is that correct? This is what we are calling a, a phase one. We do believe that we'll be able to get most of the sewer collection system done with this. Um, however, we are going to need to come back in the future to, to do the water assets that we have as well. So this is, we'll do sewer, uh, there will be no additional funds necessary for the sewer project, but when you go back for water, there would be an additional and separate request. That, that would if be We're not taking a bite of the well and have to consume the rest of the well later. We do believe that the 60000 will get us through uh, because it's, and Tim might be able to explain this better than me, the infiltration and inflow study that's going on, the, the consultants and engineering firm for that are going to take care of the manhole basically from the top down in their assessment. So typically when they do the GIS um, study, it, it's the manhole information and everything, but since infiltration and inflow is doing that, they'll be doing surface top only, which is going to allow them to go much further. Okay, I, I, I'm not inferring that I'm against the project, it's just that when I read this uh, summary of things about the uh, demographics and so forth, those are just simply uh, parts of the request uh, and it's not part of the future system. Um, actually, when, when the consultant gets here and starts doing that work, you know, they'll do the spatial location. Sorry. Do the spatial location for water and sewer attributes 
when we're in the neighborhood area, when, when they coincide with each other in parallel, when they're going to be there doing sewer, they'll pick up those water attributes as well. We're going to focus on the sewer attributes first because that's part of our DHEC uh, corrective action plan based on our collection system. So our emphasis is going to be on wastewater collections, but we are going to pick up some water as well. And hopefully, um, once we get uh, Thomas and Hutton on board, you know, it may be possible that we can chip in with some of our manpower and do some location work too, as long as they provide the equipment. Okay. So, you saying we don't know where Mr. Kane? Yes. You saying that we don't know where these lines are? No, we, we do know where they are. We've got paper plans on it, and I'm thinking they're probably going to do some, take those paper plans and probably digitize some of that to get them close, and then we'll do the actual locations sub-meter on the, on the manholes, and then we'll pick up the water attributes. With the, some, most of the fire hydrants have already been got, and they've been turned over to Lexington County, and they're on Lexington County system. We've got some water valves that we actually did in-house with the Lexington County system equipment, and we're hoping that we're going to have the same relationship with Thomas and Hutton. Yeah, yeah. if I may, this is in response to a DHEC consent order. I'm sorry, I thought we so have another We're kind of, I want to make sure that one council member speaks at a time. Okay. If I may. Mr. Hall. Uh, this is in response to a DHEC consent order. I, that, cons correct. that consent order it, it's preceding. It's part of our corrective, corrective action plan. Did that consent order precede my seating in this seat? I don't recall a copy of that consent order. Actually, there was a sanitary survey inspection, uh, and then a collection system inspection, and then... Uh, has council had copies? We got had, it has actually, council had copies of those? Yes, I think so. It was issued. Okay, it's all right. I'll go, back through, I'll go back through my records. Right now, we have a first and a second on the approval of an engineering firm to perform the GIS locating services of the town's sewer collection system. And we are in discussion. Any more discussion on this item? Can I finish? Mr. Kane? Okay. Uh, so, to piggyback on what Bob said, are you going to send that up and send that to everybody? Even if you send it again, if you send it once, if you can send it again so we can have it. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to send you the order and our response. Yeah. Our and uh, two things, Tim. One, we know that we have uh, stormwater infiltration going into our wastewater. So we, we basically treat rainwater. And somebody's responsible for that. Huh? Well we can keep it in the system. Well yeah, but we somebody's responsible for um it, it's not an accident is what I'm saying. It's piped into our sewer system. One of the, a couple of those van holes uh, uh drain um uh containers they, they're actually routed into our, our um, wastewater tra treatment system, right? I, I would certainly hope not, but I, I'm like, you they know, are. I fear that there are some, some, right. some, some sewer connections. Um, and we actually have to set up a sewer evaluation study in play there, too. Yeah. And um, they're actually monitoring inflow. And based on the last couple of rain events, we've seen uh, inflow probably in the majority of our system. And hopefully, hopefully we're going to be able to. There are some areas too where we've had some flood conditions based on low lying areas because of just um, it could be beaver dams, it could just and it's just flood conditions too. We have a bad How much does it cost us to treat um, uh, our sewer per million gallons? Um, it roughly costs us about what two dollars and forty seven thousand? Two thirty two thousand, something so, like that. Whoever. But what happens when we get that infiltration and inflow? We don't have the solids, we don't have the food mass. So, I mean, it's just hydraulic capacity. Yeah, but it's, it, it's, it's wear and tear on the system. It's, right? it's hard to treat because it's really nothing there for Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hall. I will never get the fish. <laughs> 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 we're, 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 I'm, 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 we're right there on some line of uh, uh, moving way off here. Let's, uh, How, how's let's, that moving way off? Um, Mr. Kane. Mr. Mayor, uh, may I call for the road? Wow. Uh, call for the vote. Any discussion? Take, yeah. Wow. Call for vote to end discussion. District 1 to end discussion. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. We have no vote. I mean, if I can't, if I can't speak, then I'm not going to vote. District 3. 
Okay, District 4? Yes. Yes. District 5? Yes, it's the end of the discussion. To end the discussion, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, District 6, thank you. Yeah. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. Well, yes, discussion is ended. Um, approval of architect engineers to engineer and design town, or sorry, yeah. approval of an engineering firm to perform the GIS locating services of the town's sewer collection. Um, as presented by council in our, our staff in our packet. District 1? Yeah. District 2? Yes. District 3? No. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. Uh, oh, yes, motion passes. Uh, moving on to item E, approval of architect and engineers to engineer and design town park improvements and town entrance signs. Do I have it in our packet? Do I have a motion? Make a motion, we Mr. Gambro. Approval of architect and engineering design. And do I have a second? Second. Mr. Prowse. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. Hall. It's my understanding that this is an engineering study and that it will not result in any actual physical hardware. It will not get us a single sign. In fact, those locations have yet to be voted upon by council. Is that correct? That's correct. This so we're spending is for, 200, this 000, is, another two hundred thousand uh, dollars out of. We're biting, taking another bite out of a whale, which is has well. To you'll never be able to do twelve million dollars. All right. You would never be able to do yeah, the improvements without. No, no, no. It's not for you, special. Okay. Mr. Hall has the floor. All right. Now, I Mr. Did, Luck do is answering his question. Mr. Hall, continue, please. I have, in the recent weeks, have visited. Uh, Chapin, Little Mountain, Swansea, uh, Newberry. All right, these these people have good signage, and in speaking with those people, they did not spend two hundred thousand uh, dollars. In fact, excuse me, I stand corrected because two hundred thousand is the overall, but uh, we're talking about fifteen thousand for signage, but we're talking um, one hundred and forty thousand for the Wilson Street Park. That is correct. Um, it, are you aware that there are, and I understand that includes the restroom, are you aware that there are uh, companies out there that uh, do this for a living, they install uh, restrooms, standalone restrooms and parks, and they have models that are ready to drop in without $140,000 for additional engineering? Well, uh, I mean, we're not just talking about a restroom here. I mean, if everyone wants to look right over there on the middle board, that was the conceptual idea that was brought forth in the master plan. Now, whether or not it ends up to be identical to what that shows will be determined through, through engineering and discussions. But from a conceptual idea, that's much more than just a portable restroom building being brought in and sat on the property and plumbed in. That, that's a lot more in the form of improvements. Thank you, Mr. Luckadoo. I don't mean to turn you off, but no, no, my, no. my point is the fact that we are taking a bite out of a whale. Uh, we, to my best of my knowledge, this council Mr. Mayor, or any previous question. council or any previous council has Mr. not voted to adopt the master plan. Call for the question. Mr. Kane, call for the question in discussion. Uh, District 1 to end discussion. Yeah. District 2. Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. This is the vote and approval of the architectural engineers to engineer and design town parks, improvements in town, ancient signs. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? No. And I vote yes. Motion has passed. Uh, moving on to item 10, the manager's report. <coughs> Mr. Luckadoo, if you would. <coughs> All right. A um, few updates here. Um, with regards to the town audit, uh, we do plan, um, the auditors plan to provide council uh, next month's regular meeting with the, with the final audit. 
Um, as I had updated, we did have to have an actuary valuation of the town's other post-employment benefits performed related specifically to our medical liability for current and retired employees. Um, that has been completed at this point, and the auditors are, are putting the final touches on the audit. Um, unfortunately, they just were not able to have that done by this meeting. Uh, 2021 South Carolina Ethics Commission Statement of Economic Interest. I think everyone's familiar with that. We did receive um, a letter in the mail this past week that, that it's that time of the year. Um, each council member is required by law to file this Statement of Economic Interest by March 30th, 2021. I'm mentioning it tonight. It'll be on the calendar in a weekly report from now until March 30th, 2021, just to remind everybody, because failure to do so does result in a penalty starting at $100 if the report is not filed. So make sure, I will do my part to make sure that each one of y'all are reminded on a weekly basis up until March 30th. And if y'all could help remind me that I need to get <coughs> mine done as well, which is required, I would appreciate that greatly. Don't play around. <laughs> um, and Ms. Judy will make sure she gets hers. hers Done as well. <laughs> so um, next Monday, a week from today, uh, is a town holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, our offices will be closed that day. Um, as I've stated um, in a few emails previously, weekly reports, we will have a council work session on the following Monday, January 25th. Uh, the primary thing for that night is to have um, Summit Engineering on hand to um, present to you guys their recommendations for the fog ordinance updates and the program recommendations um, and to have a discussion on that. Uh, once that occurs and, and they can present everything we can have discussion, that will help finalize providing a direction on, on a, bringing an ordinance to you guys for adoption. The Birdie pump station, uh, most of the electrical control panels that we've been waiting on have been delivered. However, there are a few pieces and parts that the contractor is waiting on that should arrive in the next week or two. Uh, once they have those, they'll, they'll uh, be on site to perform the work and they do expect about three weeks to handle all of the electrical um, components and to install everything with regards to that. Once the electrical is done, that project will close out and we will be done. And I'm sure CDBG will be glad that we're done with that as well. Um, Tim alluded a few minutes ago to the infiltration and inflow study. Uh, certainly the rain event that occurred the first, of Jan first part of January, I believe it was about two and a half inches of rain over a couple of days. That, that, was, uh, that did allow, if there's a positive we can take from it, that allowed the uh, consultants performing the infiltration and inflow study to have a significant rain event to see what impact um, is on our system among those 12 monitors that they installed. Um, they are reading it um, all the time remotely. They have the ability to get that data. So every time there's a rain event, they'll pull that. And what they've stated they will likely do is if they see some areas that they have higher flows than other areas, they may move some of the flow monitors around uh, to further pinpoint where the infiltration and inflow may be coming from. Um, we are still awaiting our final permit from DHEC related to the floating aeration project. Uh, we hope to have that very soon. Once we receive that, uh, we can and will proceed forward with bidding um, both the floating aeration project and the other sewer project, which is rural infrastructure funded for the uh, headworks at the wastewater treatment. Moving on to the financial update, um, as you will see, we ended the um, end of December uh, with a balance of $874,897 in the general fund. We have $5,100 um, in the police donations, around a little over $25,000 in the fire department, 1% budget our account. The municipal court ended at $29,942 of victim's assistance, right at $350. Bringing our total non-utility funds to $935,728.94. On 
On the utility side, we ended our utility fund checking account at $408,886. Our utility fund reserve account at $767,827. Our capital improvement impact fee account at $1,512,698. And our USDA debt service reserve at $564,806, bringing our total of all utility funds $3,254,224. Hospitality tax checking ended the month at $890,031. Total funds for the entire town, uh, $5,079,985. The next page is just a side-by-side -side comparison of month in December um, from 2014 to 2020, just so you can see a comparison. Um, of where we've ended that month over the past six years. On the general fund, operating revenues are at 36%, uh, which is about normal for this time of year. We're going to see a, a higher fluctuation and jump in that at the end of this month as real property taxes start to come in. So we will see that, that percentage jump quite a bit over the next couple months. But we ended operating revenues are $1,570,573. Our operating expenses are right on track at 51%, uh, $2,198,913. For the utility fund, our operating revenues are 55% uh, at $1,816,682, while our operating expenses are 42%. Uh, $1,399,195. Our victim's assistance fund, the revenue is at 45%, $3,381, and our operating expenses at 49%, $3,696. And the hospitality tax fund, we are at 64% of our operating revenues at $287,661 and 19% of our operating expenses, 87641 Certainly, though, you will see that percentage um, on the hospitality tax expenses climb with the approval of some of these engineering. Uh, that number will go up. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Um Item 11, executive session. We have three items for this evening. Discussion of negotiate, negotiation incident to propose contractual arrangements for a possible purchase of a property. We have discussion of contractual matters relating to the indigent defense services and discussion regarding the selection of council members to serve on town manager evaluation committee. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Mr. Proust, I have a second. Second, second Mr. Gambrell. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3, Bill Chess. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I will be, yes, we are in executive session. Return to regular council meeting from executive session. So moved. Mr. Gambrell got the second. Second. Saved by Mr. Wise. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. Uh, well, yes, we are back in regular session of council. Um, item 12, possible action by council and follow up to executive session. Possible action relating to proposed contractual arrangements for possible purchase of property. Do um, I have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Prouts. I have two motions um, related to that. Uh, first motion is uh, I move the town to enter into a contract to purchase uh, the address 115 North Pine Street, May 1st, April, as presented in executive session. Uh, this purchase will be funded by the hospitality tax uh, fund account. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Etheridge. In discussion. District 1? Yes. Yeah. District 2? Yeah. Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Yeah. District 5? Yes. Mm -hmm. District 6? Yes. Yeah. District 7? Yes. Yeah. District 8? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, motion passes. Uh, Mr. Cross, you said you have a second motion. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Um, second motion is as follows. I move to expend up to $2,000 for the purchase of closing costs on the purchase of 115 uh, North Pine Street. 
and up to $11,500 for asbestos abatement uh, at the same address. Also up to $10,000 for the demolition and removal of the structure at 115 North Pine Street and up to $27,200 uh, for engineering costs associated with the, um, the new work that we anticipate for a parking lot at 115 North Pine Street for a uh, total sum uh, of $40,000 to be paid out of the hospitality tax fund. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Gambrell, any discussion? Yeah. Mr. Gambrell? And that should be the total price of that. Uh, of that. Address your question to the man. That's the total price of the operation. Uh, that will get you up to the point of construction cost in the future. That's everything. This does not include the construction work in the future. This is the engineer design. By Thank you. Any other? District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District five. Yeah. District six. Yes. District seven. Okay. I see. See. District eight. Yes. yes. And mayor votes yes. Second motion passes. Possible action regarding contractual matters relating to incident defense services we have none at this time. Um, possible action regarding the selection of council members to serve on town managers evaluation committee. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. Gambrell. I'd like Ms. Ethers and John May. Ms. Ethers and Ms. Johnny May. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by. I think Mr. Kane got just beat you on that. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 5? Okay. <laughs> District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion passes. Potential agenda items for next month's meeting, February 8th. Do I have a motion? Books. Books. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Edwards. I would like to um, <clears throat> bring it up that we discussed paving Oak Street. Thank you. A motion by Ms. Edwards to discuss. Paving Oak Street, do I have second. a second? Second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. <laughs> District 2? District 2? Yes. He's booked on me. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yeah. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. Can I vote yes? Any other items? For next month's meeting, so uh, no fruit trucks. Books. Um, Mr. Kane, motion to speak about the books again. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gambrell. Any discussion? District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District five. Yes. Yeah. District six. Yes. District seven. Yes. District eight. Yes. And I vote yes. Motion passes. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, any more? Any more? Sorry. I was just going to say, if there are any other council members that want their money put into the book deal, let me know. Before you I write the motion, send me an email so that I remember. Thank you. Thank you. No. No. I'm about to have a sidebar. Uh, Where are we? Where are we, Mr. Mayor? Can we talk about this later? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else for next month's agenda items for next month's meeting? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Salute. Mr. Gambrell, do I have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Etheridge. Any discussion? District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Road time. District 4. Yes. District 5. Yep. District 6. Yes. District 7. Yes. District 8. Um, and I, eight? Yeah. Yes, thank you. And I go, yes, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>